Welcome to the week number nine overview for microeconomic principles here at Rutgers University. This week we only have one chapter that we're going over and that is on monopolistic competition. And just to make sure that you can understand overall relative to the previous weeks that you understand the spectrum of competition from perfect competition to monopoly on the ends and then oligopoly and monopolistic competition uh, in the middle between those two extreme ends. So the overview for the chapter, we go over a section on the industry characteristics of monopolistic competition. Make sure that you remember a monopolistically competitive industry has the following structural characteristics, a large number of firms, no barriers to entry, and product differentiation. So make sure you realize the importance of product differentiation in a monopolistically competitive marketplace. Relatively good substitutes for a monopolistic competitor's products are available. Monopolistic competitors try to achieve a degree of market power by differentiating their products. Additionally, we go over product differentiation and advertising. The amount of product differentiation in an industry depends on a number of features of the industry. How different are customers' tastes, are consumers' tastes and customers' tastes? Are there gains to customers in buying a product that is identical to one bought by everyone else? Are there large-scale economies associated with making only one variety of a good? Industries may, with many different products, reflect strong heterogeneity of consumers, low gains from coordination, and small cost gains from standardization. Also, products can be differentiated horizontally or vertically. Horizontal differentiation produces different types of goods with different appeals to different types of people. In vertical integration, people agree that one product is better than another. They just may not be willing to pay for the better goods. So make sure you have a good understanding of the difference between being differentiated horizontally versus vertically. Also in this section, uh, the concepts of behavioral economics, a developing field in economics. Behavioral economics suggests that there may be times when too, many, too much variety reduces consumers' purchases. Behavioral economics also suggests that there may be times when consumers prefer one form of a good over another as a way to commit themselves to different actions in the future that they would otherwise take. Advocates of free and open competition believe that differentiated products and advertising give the market system its vitality and are the basis of its power. Critics argue that product differentiation and advertising are wasteful and inefficient. So just be aware of some of the controversy that's associated with product differentiation and advertising. And some people feel that it adds strength to the market. Others feel that it undermines the market. And price and output determination in a monopolistically competitive market. By differentiating the products, firms will be able to raise prices without losing all demand. The demand curve facing a monopolistic competitor is less elastic than the demand curve faced by a perfectly competitive firm, but more elastic than the demand curve faced by a monopoly. So realize those that characteristics that monop uh, the demand in a monopolistically competitive market falls between perfect competition and monopoly. Also realize that to maximize profits in the short run, a monopolistically competitive firm will increase output as long as the marginal revenue from increasing output and selling it exceeds the marginal cost.